Good evening. My name is Darcy Tatum. Welcome to Wednesday night's lessons at St. Edward's. And thank you for giving me about 20 minutes of your time tonight. I'd like you to join me in the daily evening prayer, right to from the Book of Common Prayer, starting on page 115. We'll start in a moment to give you a moment, uh, some time to look that up. Yours is the day, O God. Yours is also the night. You established the moon and the sun. You fixed the boundaries of the earth. You made both summer and winter. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart, te my heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not fail. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me, and the light around me turn to night, darkness is not dark to you, O Lord. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Dear friends in Christ, here in the presence of Almighty God, let us kneel in silence and with pertinent obedient hearts confess our sins so that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen, strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified in all the worlds. Now, please join me for Psalm 36 on page 632. There is a voice of rebellion deep in the heart of the wicked. There is no fear of God before his eyes. He flatters himself in his own eyes that his hateful sin will not be found out. The words of his mouth are wicked and deceitful. He has left off acting wisely and doing good. He thinks up wickedness upon his bed, and as he himself is in no good way, he does not abhor that which is evil. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens, and your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the strong mountains, your justice like the great deep. You save both man and beast, O Lord. How priceless is your love, O God! Your people take refuge under the shadow of your wings. 
They feast upon the abundance of your house. You give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the well of life, and in your light we see light. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you, and your favor to those who are true of heart. Let not the foot of the proud come near me, nor the hand of the wicked push me aside. See how they are fallen, those who work wickedness. They are cast down and shall not be able to rise. At this point, I would normally, we would normally conduct a lesson, uh, two lessons, but I'm going to make a slight change. And I'd like to read you the gospel appointed for today. And then we'll talk about that later. He said to his disciples, excuse me, a reading from Luke 12, verses 22 through 31. He said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, and or about your body, what you will wear. For the life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap. They neither storehouse nor barn. And yet God feeds them. Oh, how much more value are you than the birds? And can you, by worrying, add a single day to the span of your life? If then you are not able to do such a small thing as that, why do you worry about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not keep striving for what you are to eat, what you are to drink, and do not keep worrying. For it is the nations of the world that strive after all these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, strive for his kingdom, and these things will be given to you. Now on page 120. Lord, you now have set your servant free. Go to peace. Go to peace as you have promised. For, those, for these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Now, just a few thoughts. During these Wednesday night lessons, Father Fabio asked that the vestry share our views concerning the status of the parish, and I'm very pleased to do that. In the reading for tonight, Jesus tells us not to worry about our lives, what we will eat, about our bodies, or what we will wear. I struggle with that message even during normal times, but in the middle of a pandemic, it is especially hard. I ask you, how can my fr I ask, how can my friends and relatives that lose their jobs and were living paycheck to paycheck anyway not worry? In this lesson, I don't hear G Jesus telling us to forsake everything to follow him. I hear him telling us to prioritize our lives. And, and if we believe in God, he will help us. He might even make the task easier. But he is not giving us anything unless we care for each other. Remember, we are commanded to love God our neighbors, as our, and our neighbors. Should we expect God to give us food, or does he expect us to make finding food our new job? If someone can't pay the rent, are they supposed to reach out to others for help, 
or just lay around wallowing in self-pity. As the reading concludes, strive for his kingdom and these things will be given to you as well. If that's not a call to action, I don't know what it is. God has blessed me and I have never had to face the humiliation of not being able to care for myself or provide for my family. Does this mean I am somehow favored? Does that mean I'm doing what God expects of me? Not at all. I actually think God expects more of me than others who may be less fortunate. I think I'm helping, but I can't help but wonder if I'm doing enough. And sadly, I still worry. But knowing he is with me and shares my burden lessens the worry and makes it easier to carry on. During the pandemic, we have all been asked to sacrifice. At St. Edward's, we gladly sacrifice our mobility and indulgences to reduce the possibility of spreading disease. I am certain most of us think about the millions of people that have been inflicted with this terrible illness daily. We pray for the hundreds of thousands that have died. We pray for our fellow citizens. We pray for our leaders. We pray for an end of the suffering. But meanwhile, life goes on around us. Since we stopped meeting on Sundays, children have been born in our parish. Parishioners have watched loved ones die, but were not able to hold their hands. Can you imagine the pain that is that entails? I can't. We have seen some of our parish soldiers go to war. We have seen some of our parish family and friends diagnosed with serious illnesses other than the COVID-19. I have watched a friend deal with the agony of seeing one of his children go into a coma and not know if she'll ever return. We have seen some of our prisoners and friends lose their jobs. We still see needless violence throughout our community daily. During this period of pain and suffering, though, I believe St. Edward's is showing its true spirit and the core nature of our members is coming out. I know parishioners who risk their health to care for those that have contracted COVID-19. I have seen other parishioners place themselves in jeopardy to feed the hungry. Others have created housing for those without shelter, started prayer chains for their neighbors in need, and encouraged us with their joy and uplifting spirits and work. I've seen parishioners reach out with telephone calls and text messages just to ask, are you okay? How are you? What a great joy such a call can be. I've heard several prisoners who have donated their stimulus checks to pay rent for those in need. But to me, I am most inspired by those that have worked so hard to keep our parish alive during this downturn, during the shutdown. But most of all, I thank God for giving us Father Fabio and his strong, quiet leadership. I believe God expects us all to act during this pandemic, and we are doing so. At St. Edward's, we are truly blessed, and I know our care for each other is sincere and deep. God bless you and your family. If you are suffering pain and worry tonight, may he grant you peace. Tomorrow, may you awake and re with renewed strength to continue to strive for God's kingdom and receive his blessings. St. Edwards is doing well. Now, would you please join me in saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon the earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Now join me on page 124 for a colic for the presence of Christ. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for evening is at hand and the day is past. Our companion in the way, be our companion in the way, kindle our hearts and awaken hope, that we may know you as you are revealed in Scripture and the breaking of the bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, for those who work, or watch, or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous. And all for your love's sake. Now, in a moment of silence, please add your intercessions and thanksgivings as may be needed. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may best be, as may, as may best be it for us. Granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age of, to come, life everlasting. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church, and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Thank you very much. Good evening.